Hello friends, uh, Rizzotti here with a RimWorld playthrough. As you may well know, RimWorld is a colony simulator by Time Sylvester, after all it says so right here on the screen. Uh, beyond that, RimWorld is also my favorite game I've played recently, and I'll have about 800 hours in it, the vast majority of which I've played entirely vanilla. The base game is just so nice, uh, there are a lot of quality of life mods out there, mods may basically change anything else you want, but I like vanilla through and through. This playthrough will be using one mod, and that mod is probably the most popular out there, namely EDB Prepare Carefully, which lets you select and customize your colonists, pick their traits, exactly how they look, their exact skills, so you don't have to endlessly re-roll to get a colonist you want to work with. Uh, the aim of this colony, a little bit unusual, you can see it in the title, we're going to get 100 cats in this RimWorld colony. You might say, Resorty, why cats? Aren't cats the worst of all possible animals in the game? That's kind of the point. Cats do not haul, they do not fight, they do not rescue you, they also will refuse to eat vegetables, so you have to constantly get meat-based meals for them. 100 cats, lots of work, should be a good, good time. In particular colony, we're gonna do Crash Landed, have three people, uh, it should be enough people to maintain the working of the base, while also having at least one person pretty much always on cat food duty. Initially, with only two cats, it won't be a big problem. But once we get to 30, 40, 50 cats, we actually have a lot of food stockpiled. So that one person will be pretty well attached to that the whole way along. We'll use the normal crash landed items. As I said though, we are gonna use pair carefully to ensure we have cats and also make sure we have uh, the right kind of colonists. For this playthrough, we're gonna do Cassandra Classic. Uh, I like her nice stepwise difficulty increase. Um, right now, you know, Randy Random is always a fun time, but I don't think it's appropriate because you might end up sending uh, multiple enemies with incendiary launchers in the first raid, burning all the cats to death, and gosh, no one wants that. Fever Chillax, I mean, as much as you have time to relax and build up your colony, that's a rat or a mouse or some other small rodent creature. Upsetting the cats, no good at all. So Cassandra's good, we'll go extreme. And then I'm also going to do permadeath, which I'm not sure is a good choice for recording and uploading, but it guarantees that no matter what happens, good or bad, we'll get to hold on to it and see it. Even if our cats end up eating all the colonists, or our colonists end up eating all the cats, whichever way it goes, we stuck with it. There are consequences to our choices. That's what makes RimWorld so darn great. Uh, as a seed, let's go ahead and just use cats to get in the right kind of mind, or right frame of mind for this particular playthrough. Cats are what we need. I'm going to be picking a fairly banal biome, a fairly mundane biome, probably Temperate Forest. I think the 100 cats in themselves provide enough difficulty for uh, this whole job to be hard enough. Uh, let's see what kind of factions we have. So you can see who the other players in this playthrough are going to be. They include uh, two friendly Outlander unions, so advanced technology folks who are on our team. Both of them hate, hate, hate the pirates. The Outlanders, though, have a positive disposition towards the tribals. And so one of those funny situations might happen where the Outlanders come to trade, the tribals come to attack, the Outlanders just stand there while the tribals kill us. Always a good time. Uh, but three hostile factions, two friendly factions, whole bunch of pirates including one whose name, whose boss's name is Brick, that kind of guy. That group right there. Okay. We do want to pick a biome. Like I said, Tempered Four sounds good to me, and I don't believe that where you place your base on the map, like proximity to other base faction, other faction bases, um, has any determinants on what kind of raids come. I'm going to build between these two tribal bases, just in case there's some effect. Maybe they'll come visit us and be easier to deal with than the terrifying pirates up there. So year-round growing, um, like I said, I'm going to pick a fairly easy biome just so we're able to not deal with constant, um, constant food problems along with our constant cat problems. No caves, thank you. I mean, caves were a really great addition in Beta 18, uh, but not for this playthrough. All right, let's do this. Large hills, year-round growing. Some diseases, but not a lot. No caves. I have granite for making strong stone walls. I like it. 
Forest deciduous trees and dispersed with fertile clearings. Many species of animals move around in the trees and on the plains. Because of the snow, it's slow to travel in winter. We don't need to travel. We have cats to cuddle with back at home. We're going to be just fine. Um, all right. In selecting our creatures, our creatures, our characters, rather, we're going to need to have a particular way of setting up our people to feed all those cats, especially because they do not eat vegetables. We need to have a special source of food. Now, these three people are going to have, I have a vision of them as not just liking cats, not just having a cat or two at home to, you know, play with occasionally and cuddle with. Though these people are fully devoted to cats. As such, they would do anything for the cats. They would um, spend long hours putting out cat beds. They would pet the cats and, and brush their fur. They would also, if necessary, chop raiders into tiny little pieces in order to feed the cats insatiable lust for human flesh. So to that end, I'm going to have all three of our colonists be psychopaths. And psychopaths, you don't already know, are people with no empathy in this game. The suffering of others don't bother them even a little bit. Don't mind if other people are butchered, left unburied, imprisoned, sold to slavery. It's no mood boost from socializing, but can chop apart raiders and feed them to the cats. That should be good. Past that, I'm going to go ahead and put together my other three colonists. Uh, I'll do that off, off the uh, video and come right back in just one moment. Okay. Uh, over the past few minutes, I've gone ahead and selected three characters that I don't think are, are too overpowered. I uh, didn't want to have to sit here and watch me uh, moving bars up and down. So three characters, uh, the first of whom will be our uh, cook and grower, both. Uh, you can see that not a huge amount of skill points, not a huge amount of fire, uh, but cook and grower eventually will grow into your job. Uh, second, we'll have a character who is going to focus on research and doctoring. I like having those two together. It's always nice. And then finally, a character who is uh, focused on construction and I'm guessing mining, but... Mining's all a little bit lacking on all of our people. As I was clicking through, you probably saw that all three of them have the same trait set. Uh, all three of them are kind psychopaths. Now, kindness, as I understand, doesn't actually benefit psychopaths at all. Uh, kindness just has them not insulting each other. But if psychopaths already don't get social bonuses, I'm guessing this means that they also uh, don't get social detriment from uh, being abused by abrasive folks. Uh, it might be the case that kindness limits social fighting, like the fights that start due to insults, uh, but I'm not positive on that. But psychopath kindness just delights me because these are really creepy people, right? You have no indication they're actually plotting against you, actually checked out from the social scene, uh, because they're just always a smile on their face, and that seems like a really nice time. Right, beyond that, we need to go ahead and use the equipment modifier to uh, get rid of our, our fantastic starting animal the game gave us, the male warg, which or wargs generally just eat uh, enemies so easily, they're great fighting beasts. Uh, but that's not what we're here for. We don't need fighting beasts. We do instead need a female cat and a male cat both, because as you well know, cats are not asexual reproducers. Gotta have two of them to get this party started. Hopefully before too long, those two will produce 98 others. Our 100 cat colony will be complete. We shall see. Uh, maintaining a base for 100 cats is one heck of a job. The three of us awake in our crypt sleep sarcophagi, packed in with so many cats. The sounds of sirens and ripping metal all around us. We barely get to the escape pods where the ship is torn apart. Sometime later, we land on this unknown rimworld. As pieces of a shredded starship fall around you, you start making plans to survive. But not really to survive, just to get more and more cats. That is the aim here. All right, as we land, we'll go ahead and pause right away, get a look at our map. Uh, map is fairly sparse in mountainous areas, so nothing terribly nice for, for walling ourselves inside. No easily defensible areas pop out right away. Uh, this tremendous amount of rich soil right here is a big attraction, though, uh, as is the thermal generator uh, location for the steam geyser, though I'm not entirely sure if we'll have a base around long enough to need that kind of advanced technology. Uh, my sense is, for right now, this would be a defensible area if we build walls all the way around just to get started. This one would be also, this is a bit of a large uh, area to cover with walls early game. I think what we're going to do is wall this off, wall this off, 
here also and take some of this area. I'm not exactly sure how it's going to go. We're going to see how it develops as we go along. But I believe that by building in this area, it's most defensible. And then having these uh, rich soil fields would be fantastic for keeping our food situation going nicely. Got to start, though, by getting our people some weapons. So ready to defend themselves right away. The best shooter we have is Levin with an 8 in shooting and a little bit of fire, a little bit of passion for putting bullets inside of enemies. Already... Already our animals are making hearts. That right there is a good sign that a cat is on the way. Or actually, I believe cats have larger than single litters in this game, so might be able to have a whole group of cats come in pretty quick. We'll see how long it takes. Eventually, all that exponential growth. That's what we really, really need. So as I said, I want to start building over here, so we'll make our starting dump stockpile and normal stockpile uh, just on the ground here, and eventually we'll do more work to figure out we really want to put it instead, but for the moment, that's okay. So right now, everyone's a hauler. Should I bring our things over here? Let's get a roof on top of our stockpiles. So things don't go bad out in the rain. Uh, this building right here is a fantastic one for a first night sleeping area. Um, we'll eventually move everything into our more defensible area, but for the time being, we can do that. We do also want to kill an animal pretty early to ensure that our cats don't end up eating all of our all of our meals. I mentioned in the intro, cats do not eat live vegetables or plants. They're only willing to eat meat stuff. And without, without a um, group of raiders here to eat yet, gonna have to be an animal instead. That'd be just fine. All right, our work here needs to get handled also. So let's do that real quick so we don't forget. Uh, happily, most people are, like I, I put in the, um, and pair carefully, most people are fairly well specialized, so we know roughly what they want them to do, even though they're not the best of characters at all. I did not mean to put everyone on job one doctoring. However, it actually seems that, somewhat by accident, all our people are decent doctors. I didn't actually set that up intentionally in the pair carefully, but cool. I like it. I like it a lot. So everyone can self-tend. Uh, self-tending is not as effective as uh, being treated by other people, but... It'll be lovely anyway. All right, past that, we have one person likely a constructor, one cook and grower. We get plants down pretty quick. Um, I don't recall who I want to be my researcher. Oh, man. All right, so our constructor is actually quite good at research also, but construction is a full-time job. Research is a full-time job. We don't want a uh, constructor to have to research. So, Element, you are in charge of research. I hope you come out of your research room often saying words like, I've made a breakthrough. It's elementary, don't you see? Elements, elementary, yes. All right, the hauling is happening. The animals are named Eli and Fudd. It's a great mod I like using called Animals Tab. I don't have it running this playthrough, but I'll have you to rename your animals. Um, for right now, they have whatever names the game gives us. That should be just fine. All right, so we don't sleep overnight outside. Let's get a door up. Our little friends are already in great shape. Good job, Levin. A poor quality bed. I thought you called yourself a constructor. Maybe some, three poor beds. My goodness, he wants to keep on working all day long. You're a constructor, correct? Yeah, double fire six. She get better for too long. All right, but getting things good. Let's get some crops growing straight away. So we don't all end up starving. I don't want to cover up that heel root. because It's not all ready to harvest, is it? No, I don't want to waste that. So for now, just rice, because rice is the fastest around the plants, especially in the um, rich soil. It's going to grow so much faster than anything else. And we don't yet have anyone able to grow heel root, but we will before too long. So I'm just going to preemptively mark this a heel root spot so I don't forget. Uh, getting medicine sooner or later would be super nice. So things are going along nicely. We will mark these to plant cut so that whenever they're ready to be harvested, we can do that. Only one so far. Too, too sad, too sad, but getting medicine coming in is nice. All right, most of our food is still up and hauled over. I want to get it all over there ASAP so that we're able to uh, restrict it from the cats. We don't want the cats eating the fancy food. I want to get them a corpse, so... What kind of animal would probably be easiest for us to kill at this early stage? How about a bunny rabbit? I don't want it all to go to waste, so... Levin, I'm gonna need to come over and just kill this bunny rabbit. Just early game here. 
I've been marking it as Hall, that way it'll be uh, unforbidden as soon as we kill it. Not even worry about that at all. If we're actually using hunting, oh, 11. Come on, man. Come on, man. There we go. Only took quite a few shots. But that'll be our cat food for the time being. Once all the meals are removed, which they almost are, I'll order Levin to move the meals just to hasten our ability to get on with life. One more, Yoder, you get that. Never do hauling. Oh, Yoder, how'd you slip through? I didn't even notice this. Incapable of dumb labor. Mistakes, mistakes, mistakes. That's all right, though. I believe in our ability to get this base going anyway. All right, all the food's in now, so we'll make a restricted zone uh, right here. The animal area one is actually not being used for anything, so we can make a zone that's animal area one. Run on top of our stockpile. Oh, Eli got one. Got some cookies from the cookie jar, Eli. Never again, you. And we'll manage the area invert That means the animals are now able to go anywhere except for inside of our food zone. So they should be eating from this corpse. Uh, it goes bad in two days. That's okay. We'll feed the cats until then. In two days, we'll deal with it. No problem at all. All right, Yoder is still up. Why are you still up? It is, it is clearly... It is clearly columnist bedtime. There you go. Off to columnist bedtime. And I see we have all these uh, berries here. Let's make sure someone's set up for plant cutting and try to get that. Uh, these cut down. Our, our best plant cutter will be our best grower also. Unfortunately, though, plant cutting is a kind of dumb labor. And so our uh, unable to dumb labor grower is not going to be able to contribute in that way. That's been a little bit of a hitch in our basis strategy. But that's okay. There are other people who can do it. Um, we'll say that, yeah, our hauler cleaner researcher uh, will be in charge of plant cutting. Just guess those berries to keep our food stockpiles high. Colonists love berries, always a nice time. And I want to start getting walls up uh, because though raid one will be pretty easy, raid two is going to be pretty unfortunate. Uh, on Cassandra Extreme, if you don't get that wall up about as fast as possible, you might have a really, really bad time. So let's go ahead and add... Uh, this all into being rice zone. They have plenty of rice coming. Again, to help our grower get up to eight growing as soon as possible for keel root making. That'd be nice. Okay, we can deconstruct these old buildings to get us some early stones. That's steel there. Probably will deconstruct our, our current house at some point, but not right away. Uh, other than that, we want to get our Stone masonry table up sooner or later. Probably now, actually. I'll put it outside for the time. Mm, actually, if you put it outside, it has a penalty to work. And the idea of working on stone in the rain is just no fun. So we'll make a tiny little building. Uh, it's a bad idea to use wood walls. They do burn down. But right now, we can do this. And then later in the game, we'll turn this around into a, steel, a stone building. That's, not, that's nice. That's nice. Okay, and then inside, we'll do a production table of... Stone cutting off to one side. I will make some zones right here. The stockpile zone will just be for finished stones. So the person's not carrying them all around the map and trying to make one big stockpile. So all the stone blocks go there. Looks pretty good. All right, cats, are you eating this? Ah, so because I have food here now and it is raining and such, the... Animal's body is deteriorating, so a roof there would also be good. Just keep the animal's body as fresh as possible, as long as possible. So things are going nicely. We'll set this up to do uh, granite first. There are granite chunks throughout the map. We saw some up here, for instance. And granite chunks are the best possible wall material. That ensures that we're able to get the best possible walls up as soon as possible. Now, if I had a fourth person to do the hauling, I would have that hauler start bringing granite chunks down here to uh, pile them up so the factory doesn't go quite so far to make the stones, but at this stage we don't have that fourth person, and with this playthrough we probably won't ever have it, because uh, likely any fourth person who joins will not be a psychopath, will not be able to deal with the absolute hell of us cutting apart people's bodies to feed to the cats, uh, who don't yet have a room, which gave them a room pretty soon. Um, we'll probably end up killing anyone who joins us, hate to say. All right, which of us is our best crafter? Who can we get onto stone masonry? It is Yoder the grower, which is fine. So Yoder's also the cook. So some point soon we're going to start making food. We're not there yet, though. So Yoder, once you're done planting, get on to making those stones. Get the walls up. 
this will all be a little bit large. For right now, I probably will go ahead and just block in right here, maybe in a smaller bit of that. And we'll keep the farms outside, which might mean that raiders burn them down, but I think we'll be okay. We'll see what ends up happening. Okay, so you're nicely deconstructing, taking a long time, but it's got stone walls. We're not getting granite off of them, but I think that's okay. I think having any kind of stone for the initial wall is just fine. Eventually we'll care about aesthetics and turn it into uh, some nicer walls that are all one color, but for the moment we'll do limestone just straight across. And we'll put a door in also. Uh, steel doors are best. They have the most um, durability while also moving open and closed fairly quickly. Not quite as quick as wood, but wood burns down and that's awful, awful, awful. All right, we also need to decide we want to fight inside of this base. And I'm thinking down this direction for right now. So I'll probably mine this out. Let's go mark that as such. We'll mine this out and allow our raiders to come out this way. We'll always wall this bit. Let's throw a like, uh, kill box structure, possibly. I don't know. Anything that's necessary for keeping the cats alive, what we're going to do. But at the moment, I think we're in a, a pretty good starting base. Got the basics covered, a pile of food, growing's happening. It looks A-OK. -okay. All these lovely machinery bits right here. Steel. This is a nice little seed. A pretty, pretty easy biome, pretty easy map, but it feels good. Knew, I knew there was food on the map somewhere I'd missed. There's probably a pile of steel also somewhere. There are also the starting ship chunks that have fallen. I haven't marked those to deconstruct yet. That's probably a good way to begin any playthrough is finding those right away. They have so many components inside and lots of steel, and that's a great way to get your base ahead super quick. But for the moment, we want to start thinking about uh, having more food than just rotten old rabbit course now, so the cats do not eat nearly fast enough. Uh, let's check their, their food need bar. They're going to need food tomorrow, definitely so. So we'll kill another animal in the morning. Uh, eventually we want to get the freezer going and... Uh, probably, like, the long-term story of this base will be a corpse freezer that allows the cats to just walk inside and nibble on someone's ear and satisfy them with bits of spleen. But that'll be a little bit later once we have meals to feed. For now, we haven't even got the pop-up that a cat's pregnant, I don't believe. No one's officially pregnant yet, so... We know it's happening, though. We know it. Okay, Element, despite being very good at shooting, is actually our one mailer right now. So take you off hunting so we get rid of that annoying little pop-up there that says your hunter is not able to hunt with a melee weapon. Look at granite already. That's absolutely fantastic. All right, but we do have other things we want to plant, which I should have thought of earlier, including most especially cotton. We will need clothes sooner or later. I'm going to hold off on smoke leaf right now. Uh, I'm going to... Say we're gonna avoid any sort of major mental breaks. Can be just fine. So you are cotton. And speaking of mental breaks and joy and things like that, we actually have not put up the initial uh, joy pin, pleasure rod. Got to do that. I do see we're actually out of wood already in the stockpile, but there's still plenty down here. We haven't hauled in yet. But feeding the cats is essential. So let's kill a squirrel right here. Like, I believe in beta 18 that the game was changed to n actually not allow cats to haul uh, cats to um, to hunt. Though the description does say uh, they hunt vermin, I don't think that's the case in beta 18. Yeah, their food. I was going to see what they've been eating. I should like make a, a complex analysis of cat consumption, but I don't see any corpses nearby that would have killed so. It likely is the case we're going for the, uh, the scroll meat. Okay, we do have uh, granite stones now, so let's get the granite wall going. And I'm going to try not to be too excessive at this point. We'll, we'll expand the wall out later, but for right now, just a wall like that will keep us safe. And opening over here, a door over there. Our very first visitors. Now, as much as I'd like them to be cat food, I don't think we want to upset anyone who's visiting us. Especially a town councilman. Can you imagine? New in town, the local mayor visits you, and you say, Hello, let me feed you to my cats. They would be displeased. But 
fancy, fancy shooter with lots of trigger happy. So lots of bullets being flying everywhere on him. Uh, going with Min the pop idol, doesn't believe in fighting, sings songs about being peaceful. Good job, Min. Good job. We'll talk to them, see if they have a trade. Most likely nothing, unfortunately. I would like to get a cat room done today also. So let's start thinking about that. And I'm curious where I should put it. It can be essential that we don't put the cats in position where they're able to be killed. If we are going to fight here for right now, then a cat room back here is going to be a good idea. We'll do that in just a moment. For now, though, who is our best of social six and eight and seven all pretty good actually this character's a lot of fire i didn't even notice that just right now it's crazy very strong character lots of possibilities all right yoder is done which means yoder needs some other kind of work to do this is our person who can't do any dumb labor which means uh, no hauling no cleaning just a lot of standing around so what else we have you do could do more growing could get more stones made for now a bunch of ripoff items here nothing we actually want Nothing terribly interesting. I'm thinking that we will just hard pass for the moment. Yeah, we're okay. We're okay. I mean, that that shirt be nice. Drugs are nice. Okay. But no, we're, we're all right without. All right, let's go ahead and mark you to mine. You are marked as such. Can you order mine or is mining also dumb labor? At? That's actually not. All right, though Yoder is very bad at mining, Yoder will get better at some point by doing a little bit of cleanup for us around the base. And could just do more rice. We could do the crop. How close is Yoder to eight growing? Important number. Still a fair bit away. So be a couple of harvests before we get to eight. Unless we just keep on adding in more and more uh, crops. Now we can do potatoes. We'll have the rice growing already. The heel roots potentially ready to grow, or to harvest rather, but we do want to wait to 100% to have the best chance of getting a full uh, harvest of heel root. It would be very, very nice. Uh, we do want to also cut down all these trees. And the ones outside of our kill of our uh, wall also, just to ensure that we have a nice space to fight where our shots are not being blocked when being sent at the enemy and are being blocked when being sent at us. So, chopped on all you. We are primarily a wood-based economy. We're a kindly elf people, it seems. But they're chopping down the trees. I guess we're not so elf after all. Must be dwarves. Must always be dwarves. Goodbye, visitors. You rip off artists. I hope you uh, step on a twig on the way out. Faction needs a name. All right. Our faction is going to be called... Um, I mean, something with cats, surely. The city itself can be called, like, Felineville. I'm okay with that. But the faction... Um, Cat profits, profiting from cats. Sure, I like that idea. That's a pun on profit. Oh, the from doesn't work anymore. There was a pun there, it just kind of collapsed. Too bad. All right, so whoever's plant cutting, he's got a whole lot of plant cutting to do with all those trees. Shame that Yoder just can't do it. But Yoder is staying working on that. Um, let's think food-like thoughts, I believe. Also, where'd the raccoon corpse go? I didn't notice it running away. They shouldn't have been eating it because it was uh, rotten, I think. Hmm. Well, wonders never cease. Goodbye, raccoon corpse. All right, the base is going up very nicely. Let's start thinking about kitchens and such. With all this granite, we can keep building the granite. Though, probably a good idea to preserve some of the granite for... Uh, outer walls, not just using it for uh, whatever buildings we happen to make. So, what other kinds of stone are nearby? What other chunks we have? Marble chunks. We do have more limestone that we can deconstruct. So, we'll mark this to remove floors. Someday it'll get picked up. Someday, someday. Our stop how we do have no other kinds of stones. So, I guess we used all that initial limestone on the wall there. Actually, no, it's actually hiding there. So, we have 28 left. That's enough to almost make a nice little room for cats. So we'll stay with limestone rocks for cats. So it's a beautiful white building, perfect for their opulence and grace. So they'll go up here. And no matter what size we make it at this early stage, it's going to be much, much larger late game. 
mad animal. Some animal's cranky with us. A local squirrel, also known as more cat food. Hello, Levin. Let's let's get him knocked out before he even gets here. Oh, Levin, that's not working at all. All right, who else can shoot? I believe Yoder can. Come on down, Yoder. You're gonna help out. How far away are you? Pretty far. All right, Element, you're gonna come too. Okay, squirrel versus man with rifle. Come to the melee fest now. Element's gonna come here and break it up. That's enough. All right, Levin did get bit a few times, unfortunately. A few scratches also. No permanent damages. Uh, but with this kind of injury, I'm going to say, no fancy matter soon for you. Just use your hands. We'll eat heal root soon enough, but for now, no fancy medicines. All right, this heal root being ready to harvest is great. Uh, if Levin ends up with an infection, then we will use the better medicine, but at the moment, that seems unnecessary. Or so I say, until we get the infection. All right, let's finish laying out the limestone room here. And we'll use a steel door also. And I think in the long run, we'll make this into a freezer, which will have corpses of our enemies that the cats can go into and out of, eating nicely, no problem at all. Though, that doesn't raise the chance of infestations, probably an infestable area in there. And if we do that, then uh, having cats fight infestation bugs might be hilarious, but might also be very, very bad. Might lead us to miss the 100 cats we need. They all get eaten by bugs. All right, the wolf concerns me. So I'm be a little more aggressive about predator creatures this playthrough than I normally would because they will come and eat my cats once they run out of other animals to eat. Yeah, that raccoon could have easily been my cat. Speaking of which, it's probably a good idea for us to start restricting our cats into the base, especially once the wall's up. But we'll let them wander freely for now. Once Levin's fully healed, probably tomorrow, we will go on a wolf hunting expedition and potentially get killed. Who knows? Who knows? But the base has a nice little foothold for the moment. Someone got their first break risk there. I didn't notice who it was. We can see that Levin's is the lowest um, lowest happiness currently. Large due to injury and eating on a table, so. Let's go ahead and start getting a dining room up also. Uh, again, I don't really want to use too much wood building, so I will do granite now uh, on the assumption that we have enough granite chunks around to pretty easily make more walls if necessary. So let's just think briefly. If we put a freezer here and a kitchen here, maybe dining room go there. I just don't want to dig into the mountain. That is the long and short of the issue I'm having at the moment. Just digging into the mountain, these infestations, and infestation just no fun. We can't avoid those with the freezer as long as we keep the temperature under negative 18 C, I believe. But that's going to require a bunch of freezers and a, bu or a bunch of um, coolers and a bunch of power production, which we don't yet have, but could make pretty easily. So, yeah, let's say freezer goes there. So kitchen goes here. Eventually we'll mine to make this beautiful. I promise. Now, ugly walls for everyone. That's a nice little kitchen. And next to that is a nice little dining room. Maybe too small. Let's see. We put a table in there. What does it look like? One of my favorite additions of Beta 18 is all these different table sizes. So you pick the one that's just right for your needs. For us, let's go ahead and say just a, a small one for the family. Again, we're unlikely to end up with four people. Three are probably fine. And this room definitely needs a door also. I think I should make it in such a way that's not blocking the crossway there. The walkway, rather. So we put the table up to the very top, and if people sit on both sides of it, that'll be fine. And one extra chair just for a guest looks lovely. It's absolutely fantastic. If we can zoom right through without being stopped. Might end up stockpiling something here. I'm not sure what yet, but that'll be sooner or later. All right, cargo pods arrived. What do we get from the Sky Gods? Received <laughs> incendiary shells. The game thinks... We're going to have some sieges coming real soon. Got to get the mortars ready. Fantastic. And are our cats eating much? They have food still in their stockpile. They do. It's not rotten yet, so no concerns. That's probably the new squirrel from uh, the, the man herb at a moment ago. He's coming along very, very nicely. With that wall up, I am feeling a lot safer. And our stockpile is full, so we want to actually expand the side of our stockpile, which eventually will be a, a stockpile room of some kind, but at the moment, just 
stockpile drop spot, make bigger, get further roofs on top of it, ensuring that our items all stay in pretty good condition. All right, with a mind towards defense, let's put a security sandbag line right inside the door. We should get research going pretty soon also. Also, that our bedrooms are all outside the walls. Not a great thing. We want to get that moved inside. Maybe late game or later in the game we'll use this as a prison. Uh, for right now, though, uh, it's working fine as a dormitory. There are more heal roots to harvest and to haul. So I'm going to get someone actually probably focused on hauling. Hauling is just not happening to the degree that it should happen. Again, this would be the issue of not having a fourth person. A uh, fourth person can do a lot of that work, but... Not the moment. All right, where's that wolf? The wolf that's among us. Not entirely sure where it's going off to. Slow down to the slowest speed, just so we can evaluate more carefully. It's possible I'm going right over on the screen. It was around here before. It did kill this raccoon. Now I don't see it. Let's check inside our base and make sure it's not currently engaging with the cats. So it's not. Yeah, we'll see what happens. I think we're okay. Okay, inside the base we need to have a, a bit of power production. That's uh, a little bit of a small area. Again, I am going to expand it out once we are feeling more defensible, but I don't know. For now, Levin, let's go and finish the outer wall, please. That's a good strategic choice, I think. And happily, in beta 18, as, as most of you probably know, you can hold on the shift key to uh, make a work queue. Why did you stop working, Levin? Why did you stop working, friend? I think it's the cat cut across, and the cat sitting across probably interrupted it. Yeah, that's exactly what's happening. So apparently there's a bug going right now, where anytime someone passes over a workstation, or at least a wall being built, they just stop working. That's too bad. So, I want you to work on that next. Then that. That's okay. Alright, and right now we do have the problem of enemies potentially being able to cower behind our wall using this cover against us shooting in. So I want to have some sort of uh, sandbag line to push them on in in sort of a standard kill boxy kind of way. I think I'm going to move the line of sandbags back a bit just so we have more range before the enemies get on in on top of us for our excellent shooting. Our base is okay. We're down to 11 meals though. Uh, rice is actually being harvested already, so... The kitchen is basically needed right now. So let's go ahead and make electric stove right away. No point in stopping and doing a um, fuel stove first. We'll just need to have a power production somewhere here. A wind turbine would fit, wouldn't it? With some mining, it would fit right there, no problem. I mean, minimal problem in that it's like in range of being shot by anyone who comes to attack us. But I think we are going to do that. Trees need to be chopped down. This bit of mine needs to be done. There is no roof there, though, correct? Yeah, it fits in perfectly. That's quite nice. I do so enjoy, like, Rimworld's sounds. They're able to hear all the construction here. Oh, boy, raid number one. All right, raid number one should not be a concern. Pirates and the Ash Camels. What a great name. Are they either smoking on camelback or instead have like a large hump full of uh, cigarettes ashes? Hello, Maynard, the Illuminator. Uh, not a great shooter. Is carrying a steel club, so you're not going to be any big problem, I think. We'll deal with you in a moment. Kind of far away. Uh, and as I mentioned earlier, I believe, or meant to mention at least, it's possible that the farm being outside the walls will lead them to come and burn our farms. We can't have that happen, so I want to keep an eye on that. Make sure that does not occur. All right, batteries. I'll put this right here. Consuming part of our uh, stockpile zone, but that's okay anyway. So I have a battery line, or a power line that runs straight to there. Should be good. All right, these trees need chopping also. We'll mark that, and then we'll go deal with the, the raider. These need to be marked as plant cut instead of as... Directly chopping with the chop tool. All right, where are you, friend? Right, he's actually wandering, so we don't need to kill him right away. He'll be here in just a little bit. Whenever he pops up as he's coming, I'll switch on over. All right, Levin, I appreciate your 
hot spot and trying to get a place to sit and eat. We have worn that a long time, but no, definitely getting power going is more important right now. So let everyone assigned to that job. Yoder's not happy at all. Uh-oh. <laughs> okay, so it's great that we have a new person arriving. Hooray, escape pod, yes? But this escape pod person is Element's uh, brother. And so if we kill him to feed to the cats, Element will not be happy. That's one thing with psychopaths in this game, is even if you, even if you kill them, uh, kill people who are related to them, they don't care about generally people dying, they do care quite a bit their own people dying, so we don't want to do that. We're actually let Book just walk off the map, because um, he's not a psychopath, and so we can't bring him into our cat cult here, our, our slowly developing cat, cat cult, uh, which means we just don't want him at all. All right, pirates are coming. My hope is he does leave the map, but actually, how bad are his injuries? We could heal him and then release him, or potentially banish him. He dies in 21 hours. He does have some consciousness. We'll see about you in a minute, Book. I'm definitely not going to feed you to the cats. Past that, I'm not sure what I do. All right, what I need to do, though, is head down and repel the invaders. Or invader, singular. It appears to be heading to my farm. Are you heading to the farm? Let's see. Your job is currently attacking power conduit. No, he's coming to main base, so we'll not go in too far. We'll stay here. Long, fairly open area other than these trees. So should be able to get some shots in, no problem. Elm with the poker, you come here and tank for us. Already a great shot. Well done, Levin. Levin, you're my hero. Now that you've been missing, though, no longer my hero. Heroism ends. We'll try to get some kiting on, or I believe Yoder just drew an aggro. Dodge, just keep dodging. Good job. All right, Maynard here. Tell me about yourself again. You're not a psychopath. You have some beautiful talents, but uh, you're definitely not... Uh, worthy of joining our team, so you've got the outer outcome. You chose door B, namely becoming cat food. I'll let him keep his pants as a sign of uh, of humanity, a sign of love and respect. Uh, in your in your personhood, you are still panted. Hopefully, that pa those pants are good extra fiber for our cats. Good, good, good. Right, let's haul that into cat zone. Actually, you don't haul, do you, Yoder? Yoder is not believing in hauling. Yoder has got more important jobs to do here on forgot, uh, Forsaken Planet than to haul people around very well. All right, other than... There's an oak tree here also. This oak tree is still in the way. And this bit of mining is doing also. It's just inside. That's going nicely. All right, I'm going to make change the cat zone. Make a brand new cat zone that is more appropriate to our current situation, namely keeping them inside so they don't get eaten by that terrifying wolf out there wherever it is. Let's go ahead and do that now. Okay, if we actually just re-invert Animal Area 1, it's just that spot, and then we can use the Clear tool to remove this part and then expand it to just inside the walls. I want to make sure they don't go inside our stockpile and eat our fancy food. Also want to be pretty sure they don't go outside, so I don't want the outer wall. Occasionally animals walk the other side of outer walls that are marked, I believe. Uh, we'll keep them away from the, the fighting area also. So the cats have a fairly small world. Uh, later in the game, they'll probably have an even smaller one. Let's see piled in there. Uh, eventually we'll do the horror that is piling a hundred cats into a single tile. Watch them writhe around in anger. But... That's our first little bit of the base. It's looking pretty good. Got a wall up, got two cats, uh, one of which is pregnant, I swear, so at least a third cat coming in soon. And we'll be right back to this again pretty soon. Thanks much.